So can you tell me a little bit about missile techs? You, that's a like a, a real special uh, rating when it comes to submariners because they only serve on ballistic missile submarines. Can you you know kind of emphasize a little bit more on that? Sure. Uh, so when I say missile technician, uh, when I say missile technician, uh, that's uh, is a pretty pretty uh, small job within the United States Navy. Let's say if there's like I don't know three hundred fifty thousand sailors in the Navy, there's like maybe nine hundred missile techs or something like that. And what we do is uh, ballistic missiles, the Trident II, uh, D5 ballistic missile, and we specialize in in monitoring and and uh, maintaining and launching those missiles from submarines. Hmm. And there's there's other things missile techs can do. Um, if you do a second uh, second reenlistment, you can go to shore and uh, maintain the ballistic missiles in their in their magazines and stuff like that too. And so you only take care of the ballistic missiles, not the tomahawks, not the cruise missiles. That's right. Um, I, I have seen a, a TLM in, but um, my understanding is those are all retired or in in uh, in active reserve stockpile. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. Days. Right, like and the they've been 90s. talking about maybe bringing them back. If if that was the case, would you guys be the ones that's a, that are in charge of them? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I, I got out in 04, so you know, you know, who knows what changes over that amount of time. But uh, missile technicians. Uh, so I don't know. The missile technicians, I guess, do serve on the, um, the SSGNs now, the uh, attack weapon system versus the strategic weapon system, which is what I was on the strategic weapon system. So. It's possible, but I don't know the answer. Um, primarily and historically, especially missile technicians uh, in modern times were uh, ballistic missiles. But if you go way, way back to you know the guided missile men days, which is I, I think what they used to be called, they uh, they did work on on uh, you know liquid fueled cruise missiles that were you know wheeled out of a, a barn door hump on a submarine and and launched <laughs> and hopefully fly. <laughs> I, did, I didn't of... know about uh, the missile tech serving on SSGNs. What are they doing? My understanding is they're they're um, they're manning the attack weapon system, uh, a non-nuclear cruise missile system that uh, that takes the old it's it's some Trident uh, submarine hulls that have their nuclear missile tubes removed and like a, a seven-shot Tomahawk cruise missile launcher installed, I believe. Mm -hmm. So they can perform conventional strikes, uh, conventional cruise missile strikes against adversaries using that, and also. Uh, uh, one or two of the of the tubes are converted to uh, deploy seals with lockout special operations forces. Oh yeah, right. It's gonna be weird having. A, I can't imagine having a liquid fuel. Isn't that dangerous? Having a liquid fuel missile on board. I know the Russians. I mean, they did some of that stuff. Were the early U.S. ICBMs a lot? Well, at least the missiles launched from submarines liquid fueled. Uh, I believe submarine missiles for the United States have always been solid fuel. I think that was. A uh, a policy decision made by the U.S., but uh, other countries have done liquid fuel. Hmm. For example, Russia. Doesn't that sound dangerous? Think, or do you yeah, really I don't know think anything about that? Feels a good idea. Uh, yeah. For a submarine, uh, personal, professional opinion, yeah, solid fuel is the way to go for a submarine. Oh yeah, yeah. Just the, I mean, the coolant system you have to run through. I mean, you've seen how you know uh, <laughs> SpaceX is trying to launch missiles. That's all liquid cooled stuff. So you have to like pump nitrogen in to to keep the the fuel cool and all that stuff just like so it's just so dynamic it's just not worth it where you can just light the candle and just hope it goes yeah. you know <laughs> exactly yeah the volatility of uh of those chemicals uh, i don't think it's something you want to mess with in an enclosed space right yeah but then some of the drawbacks of solid fuel too is you can't really shut it off right so does that make yeah, it more it's... difficult to actually plan out a trajectory that where you're going to have this missile hit it is an engineering challenge to design and deploy a, a throttleable solid fuel rocket motor, for sure. Um, the way the Trident missile does it is it uh, it has a like a serpentine maneuver it performs uh, that's calculated to burn off the exact amount of fuel it doesn't need. If that makes sense, so yeah. <laughs> during, during second during the second stage flight, it'll uh, it'll whirl around a little bit, um, you know, moving, undulating itself, if you will. It's and, not going to uh, do corkscrews, though, like that one that <laughs> failed. Yeah. That wasn't just a serpentine mood to burn off excess fuel, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they call it, uh, uh, I think it's like generalized energy management subsystem or, or system or something like that. And it, it just kind of does an S maneuver and, and burns up the, you know, the amount of fuel it calculates it doesn't need. Huh. There's a, a video game called Kerbal Space Program. You ever play that, Eric? No, nah, I played it a little bit. I'm not very it's good at it. It's a hard game. Yeah, it is. But yeah, it's hard. It's got a very steep learning curve. But once you get into it, it's a lot of fun. 
And if I have a solid fuel rocket on it, you can't shut it off. You can't do anything. I'll just start spinning in circles. <laughs> so it all negates, you know, it eventually negates the, uh, the trans translation, I guess you're making. 